And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the second expansion for Tiny Towns, Tiny Towns Villagers. So the first expansion added money. This one does something which may surprise you if it surprised me. So when I first played Tiny Towns, I really enjoyed it. It's a great game. Uh, Bingo-esque, put cubes out, build buildings. And I didn't even occur to me, after playing it many times, that the game was about animals living in this town. The first expansion, I was like, oh, these are animals. Well, this expansion really brings it home. You can see the animals, they're bigger on this one. They're much smaller in the original box. And that's about them. It's about the villages. It's about these animals, which are going to be working in the buildings that you have on the board. So that's what this adds. Let me explain in more detail. Okay, so here are the changes. First, each player gets a lodge board that's placed near their board here. And then you're going to take some villagers and put them in three different corners. Now, you'll notice that there's different types of animals here, but that doesn't have anything to do with the villagers at all. They're all the same, essentially. You got a pile of three one cards and a pile of four two plus cards. You will pick one of each of those, and that's just how many villagers it costs to use each card. So these will always be one, and these will be either two, and I believe one of them, two of them are, cost three villagers to do. So the way this works now is at the end of your turn, you're not allowed to have a villager where a resource is. So let's say, for example, that I placed this brown cube here on my turn. Well, that villager then must move to an orthogonal spot on the board. So let's say they move here, and then next turn I put one here, and I move it down here. And the turn after that I put one here, nothing happens. But let's say I put one here, which now allows me to build my vegetable patch. When I do that, if I place it in a different spot, so it's then where the villager is, and nothing happens, I remove these, and that's the way the game goes. But if I place it in the same spot as the villager, that villager is now working in that building. What that means is, on future turns, I can use villagers working in buildings to do these special abilities. So here I can not place a resource name by another player for one. If I use that ability, I'll take him out and put them in there. In the future, on each other turn, then you'll just place this on an empty spot on your board. So you'll have a chance to use these over and over again. Here I can construct a building with any unique resources in the correct shape. So that's pretty neat. So as long as I have the right shape, I can do this. But that's going to cost two of these, and I'll put them over here. And these are going to keep moving around. That's the new mechanisms that are added to the game. There are new buildings. You've already seen the vegetable patch and the nectar farm. So we'll just take a real quick look at these buildings here. Um, feed up to six buildings. They're not adjacent to others. And I don't want to go over every single building. But what I do want to mention is that there are only two buildings here, the hearth and the traveler center, that have to do with villagers. Um, so when construct, you can place a villager in any building in your town. Here, if this is if the traveler center is constructed with a villager working in it, put any construct any building besides a monument on any empty square in your town. Both really cool, but most of the uh, different abilities are going to be just new things. So there's some interesting ones in here. My favorite, I believe, I like the brewery, which is based, gives you points based on the number of breweries in your town adjacent to at least three unique building types. That's a lot to think of, um, but it does work. I also like the Adventurer's Guild. After you do it, you stack resources in a tower, and then you can use those resources in the future. Now, it's no points, but it's pretty neat. Now, the one building I don't like is the Folly Tower which is one point for each in your tower. So when you build this, you just place the new one on top of it. And then whoever has the tallest tower gets no points. Everyone else gets one for each in that tower, which is really kind of a, it just doesn't work in this game for me. Someone builds the tallest tower, they're essentially giving other players points. And then you have, so everyone builds this tower to be the same level. Everyone might build a one just because it gets off, you know, gets these pieces off. I don't know. I just don't like the way the Folly Tower works. Anyway, more of them. There's also the outhouse. You can put one resource you don't like in each outhouse you build. That's a pretty cool one. The Grange, just sit it all. Sit it all. So anyhow, that's what's in this expansion. 
Now component wise, it just adds these. I don't know if in the future the different shapes of them will matter, but it's neat that they made them all different kinds of animals. And it does emphasize the fact that this is animals. Uh, the cards are the same quality as everything else. You don't really need these. You could have just said stick the villagers that you have next to the board. But this is a nice way. It also shows you a little bit on here uh, as to how the villagers work. So that's uh, what's in here. Pretty simple. Everything will fit in the original box, especially if you take out the insert. So first of all, I don't dislike this expansion. It's fine, but I don't think I would buy it for my set of tiny towns. Now, on the positive end of things, I really like that there's more buildings. More buildings is always good. The more varied buildings you have, the better the game is. I don't know if I want to buy this big box, though, just to get more buildings. And the first expansion, which I liked a lot, I think added enough buildings that I'm pretty good for a while anyhow. But that's still something very positive about this, and like I said, a couple of those buildings I really enjoyed. The villagers I found to be okay. You, you, they add another thing that you can do in this game, where you, as you're placing the cubes, you're trying to place them in such a way that your final one is on a villager, so that you have that villager in a building, and then you can use one of the villager abilities. Which, as a quick aside, the fact that there's seven of those cards felt very much like this is either a half-baked idea, that there's only seven of those villager cards. Why is there not like 20? Seven just seems like a really small amount, like the same, you've seen the same abilities over and over again. Tiny Towns is a game that thrives on diversity, and like I said, I like the more buildings. So why is there only seven villagers? And it m seems likely there will only ever be seven villagers, since it would be weird to have an expansion for an expansion. Maybe there's a, a good reason for that. I just felt a little lackluster on that. And I felt like the villagers and putting them on added more thinking to the game. So, uh, you know, Tiny Towns already is a game where, hey, let's put out a cube. Everyone puts out the cube. They think about what they're going to do. This adds more thinking, but I don't think the payoff is worth it. Because you have to work hard, build a building, build a building, build a building. Okay, I got a couple villagers working. Now I can use a special ability. Now I put them back. Now I try to build the buildings again. And you, you, you use these special abilities a few times over the course of the game. And I don't know that the extra rules and all that justifies adding this to the game. Tiny Towns was a nigh perfect me mechanic wise of a game. You know, here's the game, everyone who plays it goes, wow, this works really well. This feels like shoehorning in an extra thing, and I'm not convinced it's that good. Now, that being said, I don't think it's bad. It's a decent expansion, adds more buildings, and some people who play this all the time will want that extra mechanism because maybe they played out the original one. I played Tiny Towns a lot, and I haven't got to the point where I thought that it was getting boring. Now, there is in the rule book here something called Tiny Tears, which is for experienced players where essentially you have you put the villagers out and you have to put the cubes where the villagers are. I already think Tiny Towns is a tough intellectual game as it is. I mean, it's not a hard game to play, but it's a hard game to play well. That's just insanity for me, but I guess they, they call it Tiny Tears on purpose. So that's what you have here. This is the second expansion. If I was going to get an expansion, I would get the other one first. If you love Tiny Towns and you must own everything, this is an easy buy for you and you'll like the extra variety it adds and the extra buildings don't hurt. Although I would prefer if they just sold a small little card pack and call it Tiny Towns, more buildings. I'd get those in a heartbeat, just stick them in the original game. This feels like an excuse to do that and then add this extra thing with villagers, which just didn't gel as much for me. Again, I didn't dislike it, but at the end I felt, eh, it didn't make Tiny Towns better, and that's what an expansion should do. So that's Tiny Town Villagers. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Thanks to our judgment for the Tiny Town Fanatics.